I think as a garden designer, the relationship with the client and the vehicle being the garden is, to me, the most important part. I mean, knowing the plants, knowing what plants are going to work in the garden is great, but establishing that connection with the clients so that what you do, they connect with, they feel is theirs, and that they will continue nurturing it through the years. Okay. But I kind of soak them overnight to kind of rehydrate them. And, um, yeah, because they've been here at least a month, Mary. <laughs> Would you believe? <laughs> These are tough cookies. <laughs> oh, I, that's what I guess. Roberta asked me if I would come out and help them replace the lawn in their front yard with drought-tolerant plants. When you take out a lawn in a front yard, still having some structure like the paths really make a difference in terms of having a, a defined space. Patricia came up with the idea of mimicking the lines, the roof lines of the house and making it pointed, which is just perfect. The stepping stones were added that go through the area, which weren't there before, which was nice because they took up space that didn't have to be planted. Plus, I've been really pleased that it's a minimum amount of upkeep, and it really cut down on my water bill as well. And we're fussy because of, of being quilters, we're very much into color. And, of course, the texture as well. And I love succulents, so those were all kind of requirements of what, what we were looking for. And, Patricia was incredibly patient with us <laughs> and, let, and let us be involved. <laughs> <laughs> and by knowing, having a, um, you know, a strong base in plant knowledge, I was able to pull on all of that knowledge to help bring the right plants into the garden. This guy is an Arctotis. This particular variety is called Pink Sugar. I love using this and I know as people walk by here, this is the plant that's the showstopper. Well, I planted the agave when I got it in a pot, hoping to suppress it, <laughs> to keep it smallish rather than getting gigantic. And I had it in the backyard, and when we worked on this, I came up with the idea that it could be put as a focal point here in the front yard. Pink flowered strawberries. I've never seen those before. I guess I don't get around much, but they've been probably available for the last 10, 12 years. There's two pink varieties. One is called Pink Panda, and the other is called Lipstick. And because we wanted pink flowers, and they're relatively drought tolerant, it seemed like a perfect low-growing plant to have in the garden. These little plants do have edible strawberries, uh, just a few, and we like to eat them if we can beat the little boy next door to picking them. <laughs> I keep adding little succulents here and there, and I kind of have the motto, too much is not enough. <laughs> this isn't designed, and yet it somehow looks like a sister to the front. Well, yeah. that's the idea of taking the stepping stones and some of the same colors, some of the same similar plants. I'm the gardener, Mary's the cook, so. There's only one thing I've done, and that's to, to hang the cooking implements on the fig tree. What I love in this backyard so much is the whimsy and the sense of humor. when you designed the front yard. Did you come back here for inspiration? This, must, this tells you a lot about your clients walking back here. Yes, coming back here and then also looking at the quilts was inspiring for the garden design too. So this is how I compose my quilts on a design wall. The similarities between quilting and garden are color and I've made up my own rules in quilting but one of them is repetition makes things go together. Um, I find you can put anything together in a quill just so you repeat it, then people assume that's what you meant to do. I love using succulents in a garden. Uh, not only are they drought tolerant, but when you repeat them, they make a really strong statement. Mm -hmm.
I like to do clashing, that is put different kinds of reds together. It's what other people say, oh I can't put those together because they clash. I know that means that you get excitement from them. So I'll work with a variety of reds. Geranium, some of them are bluish red, some are orangish red, some are pink, but it's the whole range. All the variety of reds rather than them being the same. That's interesting to me. I think what's most inspiring actually about designing a garden is picking up the clues from the homeowners. See what's important to them, what their aesthetic sense is, what they surround themselves with, what they love. And if you can incorporate that into the garden, I think the garden becomes a special place for everybody.